Now then, we move on to the, uh, the autonomously driven Siemens car. Um, the, the Siemens car, the uh, 1965 Mustang that is uh, driving itself up the hill. Now this has been developed through Cranfield University. Uh, Stefano is with us up here in the commentary box, who's been part of the crew developing this car. It is driving itself, the driver is there just in case there's a problem, but it is making its own way up the hill. That's correct. So it's a, as I said, it's a classic car retrofitted with the, the latest of the autonomous technology. Uh, we had a run this morning, um, we had some problems with the GPS signal. I've just noticed James, the uh, safety pilot, um, taking back control for a moment. I believe now it's going autonomously. Uh, let's see how it goes around the turn. So it's running off GPS signal, it knows the track it's got to do. That's correct. And it's therefore relying on GPS signal to track its way up the hill. It's not watching the road in front of it per se. That's correct. Uh, we rely on GPS signal. I have to say that Goodwood is one of the hardest places where you can use GPS signals. Uh, the track is very narrow and you've got trees and walls, all sorts of um, obstructions. We're also using uh, inertia navigation system, so we blend in two sense of technologies to increase our um, perception and localization. So it knows the acceleration with the inertia switch? That's correct, and knows the wheel speed as well, so we can do some dead reckoning. And then cross-reference reference back. That's I that's should correct. be here. I should be here. That's correct. I should that's be at correct. meter number 900 and 905, exactly. 906. So there's a lot of computations going on per second. There is, there is. And I just want to remind people that majority of the control systems algorithms were written by our students. In Cranfield University? Cranfield University, that's correct. Excellent. And uh, there's a lot going on at Cranfield. I went for a, a historic talk about auto unions the other day, but there's a lot of youth there. There's a lot going on. What other, what other stuff is being investigated? So we have this new um, Center for Intelligent Mobility, that's how we call it, and we have our own test track. So it's an instrumented road where um, we are testing autonomous vehicles and we're planning to do more and more development into this, um, this space. And is there a bit of crossover from stuff that's going on in America, in California? Where, where are you, or is it all just you guys on your own? You're right. What, what we're trying to do at Crownfield is that we realize that people still love to drive cars manually. Uh, at the same time, uh, driving car manually in a traffic jam, for example, is not fun. So we're trying to mix the two technologies. We still want to have a car that's fun to drive, but if you don't want to drive for whatever reason, you flick a button and the car goes autonomous. Okay, okay. While if you realize what they do in California, they're going for full autonomy. They're trying to remove the driver completely. And you, with working in partnership with Siemens, you have this, this package here. What, what's the interest from the big motor manufacturers, you know, in Germany, in America, in, in Japan? Where, where are they at? They're obviously looking, but are they not far away? Uh, remember that we are a research institution, so our main purpose is to understand how the system works and to um, uh, disseminate the knowledge. So we, we are less interested in the commercial value of this technology. Uh, we're more interested in understanding and, and let other people develop their systems thanks to our um, development of uh, the scientific value that's behind uh, autonomous technologies. And Siemens have been on board for a while? They have, they are the sponsors, so they've been um, working with us, we've got a good relationship with them. Superb, superb. And why why was it a, an older car that was chosen? Whoops, oops. oops. <laughs> why was it an older car that was chosen rather than something? That's right, we want to prove the point that we can um, retrofit autonomous technology into any car. If, if you go inside the car, you won't notice anything. It looks like the Mustang it was in 1965. If you look very close at the throttle control, for example, you will see little actuators for, uh, for the autonomous driving. And the steering is done... So it's pretty simple. If you look down the steering column, there is a, a, a little motor connected by, by a bell to the steering column. So when, exactly, so when the uh, autonomy mode is on, then the motor will do the steering. When the autonomy mode is off, the motor will completely disconnect and you drive the car yourself. And it's got to the hot top of the hill for it the second the time. A <laughs> couple of dropouts from the GPS, but there's a, there's a lot of radio waves right. and telephones and microwaves going on That's with right. wireless cameras. I mean, there's be, a lot to contend with. I'll be very interested now to go back and look at the data and see exactly what happened at that point. I guess it's a GPS drop, are you, as you suspected.